It's important to remember that this virus is only new to us. We have not evolved alongside this particular coronavirus, and so it presents a serious threat to our own immune systems. As with many pathogens, they exist in animal populations where they may or may not cause disease. But it is the pathogen itself that makes the jump from its animal host, what we sometimes call a reservoir, to us, and that almost always happens as a result of human behaviour. The origin of the current coronavirus is not fully known, though since the beginning it was presumed to have emerged from a wet market in Wuhan in China, with various animals on sale under the catch-all title of bushmeat. This includes bats, which we know also act as a reservoir specifically for coronavirus, though bats do not suffer the same symptoms as us. Kate Jones from University College London is a bat expert and a zoonotic disease expert, and I asked her if there was anything special about bats and their evolution alongside coronaviruses. It's a qualified yes. (laughs) So bats have uh, evolved to fly, clearly, and because that's very metabolically active and expensive thing to do so sometimes it's like 34 times as uh, their base rate when they're flying their metabolic um, activity rate you know, that's an incredible amount of pressure to put your body under and so there's some thoughts around how adapting to that metabolic stress and oxidative stress has enabled viruses to to co-evolve with bats bats are much more uh, they seem to be much better at dealing with oxidative stress and dna damage and repairing that damage and it also means that they are pretty resilient to having these persistent infections without getting sick so that's not to say that they don't get sick but it's just seen that like rna viruses they can tolerate them so they can uh, deal with the infection and it can persist. They, they, don't, they don't necessarily have to clear it to be able to survive that infection. And it's only when perhaps they're metabolically stressed or food stressed or you know, in pregnancy or lactation that they may have to amount an immune response to some of these viruses and then that they may be shedding these viruses in a higher frequency. So it could be that during those times that they're, they're more infectious to other species. Well, let's, let's talk about how it gets from bats to us. And obviously we don't want to just attribute bats as being the, 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 the source of this problem. There is, a, there is a process by which a pool of viruses in a particular group of animals makes it to us. How, how do we go about understanding that process? So there, there are many kind of um, ways to think about this, but it's largely about human behavior and human behavioral change which impacts this transmission dynamics between bats or any wildlife host of a pathogen and humans so it's about how the transmission is changed with human behavior so for example we are moving animals and trading animals and you know pet trade and for eating meat than than we have ever before so we're moving animals more than we ever have Um, We're doing things uh, at a rate and a scale that we've never done before. We're mixing species into wet markets. We're combining things together, which have never been seen before. And and these these, these are important things because our human behavior is affecting the transmission dynamics. So something that we would never have come into contact with, it it lives happily in to co-evolve with a, a particular wildlife species then our behaviours are changing those transmission pathways. So it's not the species' fault that we're getting these diseases from it. It's our behavioural changes which are impacting our the transmission dynamics, which is changing that. And even though from the very beginning we've been talking about a particular wet market in, in Wuhan City, uh, where we think it originated, have we got any direct indication that it was a particular type of bushmeat? Was it even the presence of bats as bushmeat in the market that we say was the pool from which it jumped to humans? Yeah, we don't know. Uh, I think we've got similarities of the strain from you know known viruses in, in some bat species. It's probably mixed with lots of other coronaviruses in other species. And then you've, you have a mutation. So, I mean, the direct evidence is, is, is still quite vague at the moment about, you know, what species it was. And even if it was bats, you know, 
I hate this demonization of any species when it's clearly our our fault. You know, it's our behavioral changes which have caused this. It's not the wildlife fault that you dragged it into a wet market and it's pathogens have combined together to cause an outbreak. It just gets me really angry. There is some emerging evidence that there may have been an intermediate mammalian species, something that we don't know, between bats and humans. So have have you got any thoughts on what that process might have been and what that intermediate species is likely to be based on our changing behaviour? Well, it's about how we're, we're moving animals and trading animals and using animals as bushmeat into these markets and so that you may have crates of animals on top of each other which never would have come into contact with each other normally. And, and there, that's a perfect storm for pathogen mixing between different um, species which n- would not be in contact with uh, normally. So I, I think it's a bit preliminary to, to pick on a particular species, but I'd seen a report of, of pangolins and pangolins are one of the most traded animals in the world so it could possibly be that given their their presence in a lot of these markets how important is the identification of the reservoir species for understanding the disease and how how it spreads and just just how how we tackle it do we need to know the pool that it came from i think it's it's really useful to understand the ecology and the ecological systems within which these pathogens are present because we need to understand how our actions are going to affect the prevalence of this disease and their impact on the host populations. So unless we understand how the host is responding to global changes like climate change, ecological systems changes like deforestation or, you know, uh, bushmeat hunting, we won't know how that pathogen might react under different future scenarios. So I think the ecology is really key. So knowing where that virus is, what species it's in, but really importantly, how that species responds to global changes, I I think is really important. Kate Jones from University College London. This is Inside Science, a coronavirus special.